Honey, I'm home. Bell Hooks coins the phrase, the oppositional gaze, as one that black women experience when absorbing film. It's a perspective that cannot identify with the white-dominated, phallocentric, or male-centric narratives. Black females are granted this unique perspective due to the inability to identify with the two positions of power, whiteness and masculinity. These positions are most observable when looking at popular films and entertainment, as black men are able to identify with the phallocentric culture and white women can seek refuge in the privileges of race commonly exhibited from the content that comes from these identities at black women's expenses. Firstly, it's important to see how black males are able to identify with the socialized superiority and how their influence shapes their perspective and representations of black women. Hook says how black men could enter an imaginative space when watching films, a phallocentric power that mediated racial negation, allowing them to identify with and fail to deconstruct the masculinity, regardless of them not being white. The movie Straight Outta Compton exhibits this through both its content as well as the scandal that arose surrounding its casting. Black women in the film were exhibited within unfortunate cliches due to cultural stereotypes. Black women exhibited in less affluent or admirable situations, cliché the quote-unquote ghetto, were standardized with social, socially criminalized features fitting the mammy cliché. Side note, the mammy cliché is an unfortunate extreme of black women portrayed commonly across society. This domestic, desexualized maternal figure shows an unattractive version of the black female who is simply a counterpart to whomever they service, whether it be their sons, the children they nanny, or the plantation owners they serve. This is the polar opposite to the Jezebel. This representation of black women filters its way throughout the film to exhibiting solely Europeanized black women at the successful points of the characters' rap careers, showing that escaping a poor lifestyle brings in one surrounded by lighter-skinned black women or even no black women at all. Black women become a backdrop, an accessory for the success of the rap careers of the main black male characters, lacking a realistic representation. It was soon realized once the casting call was made public that this had been an intentional choice by the film itself, reflecting the black male community's perception of black women. Her three types of women were invited to audition, ranging from those who would have a darker complexion to women who would look similar to Beyonce or ambiguously ethnic. This is only one of many sad expressions of black womanhood as perpetuated in media by black men, keeping black females at a distance and keeping their gaze an oppositional and deconstructing one, hurt by the lack of black female presence or the insertion of violating representation. Another voice in film that makes black women's gaze oppositional is that of white feminism. Much of film that works to serve feminism for some reason lacks blackness or the acknowledgement of any other non-white identity. Popular feminism, as it is shaped by white women, doesn't allow space for black women to be represented well or at all. Films and television socially acclaimed for feminist ideologies commonly only serve a white narrative, even if the black women are included. As addressed by Hooks, feminist film theory has commonly been rooted in a, in a historical psychoanalytic framework that privileges sexual difference, actively suppressing recognition of race, reenacting and mirroring the erasure of black womanhood. A popular example of this is the television show, Game of Thrones, a modern phenomenon critically acclaimed for its representation of femininity and power. Practically all of the female characters as leads are white. This representation of female strength, completely devoid of black women or women of color in general, exemplifies how white womanhood has dominated and facilitates the erasure of other female experiences due to white comfort. This allows the stereotypes imposed upon black women by the white gaze to be culturally perpetuated, notably the black servant, Miss Sunday, but also the exotification and failure to humanize women of color throughout the show. Further, Hooks analyzes the theme that these female narratives image function solely to reaffirm and reinscribe patriarchy, which is a clear aspect of the television show since all women in power serve as heir to a male position and are completely content in maintaining that system of wealth. This white narrative, in an attempt to promote feminism, has failed in its upholding of white-centered, unrealistic concept of feminism, as well as upholding phallocentric values. By being excluded or misrepresented throughout popular film and television, Hook says black women have been forced into an oppositional gaze. Though an interesting theory, the basis for it, as realistic portrayals of the group are, is incredibly uncommon, is clear among society.